This is a 19.3 millimeter nano ophthalmic eye, 10.5 millimeter white to white with a lens thickness of five millimeters angle closure uh, with moderately dense uh, cataract and small pupil. We're gonna take a look at the angle first using the Ahmed surgical gonial lens. This is a single mirror lens uh, designed on a handle, uh, which can be rotated uh, and to help visualize the angle. In this case, showing uh, the uh, angle closure uh, visible here. Uh, no angle structures are seen uh, at all quadrants and uh, this patient uh, presents with elevated pressures uh, on multiple medications with a chronic history. So the goal here is to remove this lens, open the angle up, and uh, manage this uh, complex eye with the shallow anterior chamber and a small pupil. We'll start up by injecting our standard dispersive viscoelastic. Often these patients have uh, compromised endothelium and a dispersive viscoelastic is handy. We use a cohesive viscoelastic as well here to help to um, create some space, and often the space is really the first issue when managing these cases. To release the posterior sneakia, which is present, we'll use a Kuglin hook to simply uh, spread and um, release the sneakia present for 260 degrees around the pupil. Pre preference here is to use a single hand to stretch as opposed to using a bimanual stretch to avoid excessive tearing uh, of the iris sphincter and uh, pupil trauma. So you see all the sneakia I released, we'll take a little bit of, of the peak at the lens periphery, make sure that there's no obvious overt zonular dialysis. Here's a super viscous agent. In this case, we're using Helon 5, which is really um, an excellent agent to not only deepen the chamber, but also to uh, expand the pupil in a viscomedriatic fashion, as well as flatten the anterior capsule to allow us to perform a safe capsule direction, which will need to be done at, at or just beyond the pupil margin. And so really, in this case, you can see the uh, gentle injection at the pupil uh, margin, pushing the iris uh, away is uh, the use of the um, Helon 5 in this case. The capsule rexus being performed here after the initiation here. We do let the rexus run slightly under the iris beyond the pupil edge if necessary to ensure we get a good five and a half millimeter pupil. And again, the benefit of having the Helon 5 really helps us to know that the likelihood of running out is low. We can see the rexus is running in a good manner here. The challenge of small pupil phaco is not so much working through a small pupil, it's walking, working through a potentially small capsular rexus. And so no matter what the pupil size is, as long as that pupil, uh, or as long as the capsular rexus is large enough, we can extract nuclear fragments even through a very small pupil. Uh, we will release some of the viscoelastic prior to the hydrodissection steps. Uh, concern, of course, is iris prolapse, and so we want to decompress the eye before injecting BSS into the capsular bag. I do like to use a fair amount of uh, gentle hydrodissection and, if necessary, hydrolineation. In this case, it's more hydrodissection. Look for that posterior wave and then move around pretty well 360 degrees around uh, the capsular bag to get an adequate uh, hydrodissection. And I do spend time on doing this. I think it really pays off for the phaco and the cortical removal aspect of the procedure here and um, take my time to do it gently to avoid excessive pressurization and potential for iris prolapse. So you can see we've really uh, hydrated or hydrodissected the lens quite well, and we'll do a little bit of rotation if we can um, to mobilize the lens. We'll enter the eye on position zero, and then position one once we en once we're in the anterior chamber to avoid iris prolapse. We're going to use a vertical chop here for this moderately dense lens, keeping all our instruments within the uh, pupillary space, and a back crack here ensures we've got a full thickness crack. And then we're going to use our classic hemi flip technique, where basically each hemi section after the first chop is essentially turned on the side or flipped halfway um, beyond the pupil. And then the uh, heminucleus is very efficiently phacoemulsified uh, at the iris uh, plane. Second heminucleus here is, uh, again, in a similar fashion, being brought up into the uh, iris plane and removed. This is a safe place to do this, keeping us away from the posterior capsule and away from the endothelium. We'll then uh, remove the epinuclear shell, which often is present in these mild to moderate cataracts and this will make it easier for the cortical removal. Prior to removing our handpiece, we inject BSS to maintain chamber depth, uh, important to prevent any shallowing. The cort cortex is removed here using our straight IA tip, typically removing the sub cortex first, uh, leaving the remaining cortex to act as a protective barrier in a shell. And this can all be done, as you can see here, through a small pupil. The instrumentation really does not need to go beyond the central uh, three, four millimeters of the pupillary aperture. And uh, again, you can see that we're basically grasping the uh, central cortical fibers to bring the uh, cortical shell into the central space and removed. 
efficiently with the IA handpiece. Then we'll use the Kuglin hook just to take a look, make sure that we've evacuated the capsular bag entirely of the cortex. We don't leave anything behind. And prior to pulling out, we're going to inject a cohesive viscoelastic to maintain the chamber and expand the capsular bag without the chamber shallowing. IA well is injected into the capsular bag. Very important to prevent any chamber shallowing for concern of positive pressure or intraoperative quote unquote malignant glaucoma. In these small pupil cases, it's very important to look and make sure the haptics are in the capsular bag entirely, also to make sure that there's no nuclear fragments. This patient here has had a history of malignant glaucoma in the fellow eye postoperatively, so we're going to stroke the iris to bring the pupil down, and then use the 23 gauge cutter anteriorly to perform an iridozonulo hyaloid vitrectomy. I'm going to make, enlarge the uh, superior iridectomy that was already present with the cutter first using position 2 and position 3. And then we'll place the cutter through that uh, enlarged iridectomy, cutting at the zonules and peripheral capsule, and proceeding to go more posteriorly, cutting the anterior hyaloid and vitreous. Now, of course, this is somewhat of a blind procedure here. We can't see where our cutter is. But we know, of course, that area is quite safe to work in. And we we'll go push back about 2 millimeters beyond the iris, and we know that we're going to be into that anterior hyaloid. Basically, we'll go to position 3 and aspirate a little bit of that uh, area removing some vitreous in that quadrant, and then position two um, while we pull out. And this now creates a unicamera live, preventing the potential from leading glaucoma, ideally, uh, reforming the anterior chamber, removing some vis viscoelastic usually manually at the end of the case, and ensuring we have a well-formed uh, closed system here with a pressurized anterior chamber at the occlusion of the case. Uh, we can see the ongoniscopic examination that the angle has now opened up nicely after the lens has been removed.